One second. So, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I have a question. Um, the question that I have is, I mean, it's a very basic question. Is you know, what is basically holding me back right now from seeing what I really am? You know, um, during the day there's a lot of let's say identification going on, you know, with this body, with the mind, um, with the agitation of the mind. And there are moments where, in which, you know, I, I see not from the mind or from this individual, but there's, you know, something bigger than that, um, whatever you call it, life or whatever. And um, so my question is, you know, I don't fully see the whole mechanics, you know, of what is behind that. And I think if I see it, you know, I would be sort of, you know, be more permanent than that. And a question linked to that is, because I have a job, you know, which demands a lot of time and uh, energy. And I have sort of always this in the back of my mind saying, you know, which is sort of an escape as well, I guess, of, of the mind, saying, you know, if I, yes, you know, I'm sort of developing in a way, you know, in time and space, if you can say that. Um, but, you know, I feel like if I quit the, this job or do something else, um, I would have more time because it also goes back a little bit, you know, to what Ramana Maharshi says sometimes um, when people come to him and say, you know, what should I do? And he just says, yeah, just, you know, ask the question, who am I? Um, and, and, you know, he says, yeah, at the beginning, may, maybe you have to put more attention, you know, to this place, but at some point you don't have to do that anymore. But, you know, I just feel like I'm at this space where I would have to put that question more on me, but I feel like I don't have the time because I put a lot of energy in this mind with the profession that I have. So that's sort of my big question that I have. What is your profession? I'm a marketing manager of a big corporation. So I have, you know, people management and, you know, it involves a lot of work. It's not just a nine to five job, you know, but it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of, yeah, a lot to do with people management, a lot of pressure, you know, financials and this and that, a lot of budget. And so there's always a lot of stuff going on. And there's a, like, you know, there's a big demand at the job of, um, like, you know, improving and, you know, also, it's a lot about reputation and you know all those kind of things. Performance. Performance is very high, and you know, like you know, you need to show people. Like we always get also ratings every year, so you know, within the company, you need to perform well, and there's a lot of pressure. And um, so yeah, you know, even after the, when I come home from the job, then you know, and even at the job, you know, I'm always sort of rooted. Or, in what I am and you know as I said momentarily but you know during the job I get lost in this mind in the thoughts and then at some point you know I'm also then tired in the evening and as I think about this you know non-stop what I am and who I am but then also many times it's you know more a perspective from the mind versus you know for the, from what I really am so I just feel like sometimes this holds me back but you know, even that is just a thought, but I think there's also, you know, some truth to it, maybe that's why I, I wanted to ask you. The, just for uh, language-wise, there is differentiation between what I am and who I am. This is why the question posed that is posed is who am I is not what am I. What is the physical form and the body? Is, which is the body and the mind, which is uh, thoughts, ideas, beliefs. This is what I am. Who I am is eternal peace, is beyond speech and mind. It's beyond the body and the mental thought process. Do you recognize this silence, this eternal peace within you? Yes. Yes, I do. So, okay. as I said, you know, there are many moments, I would say, during the day in which I recognize this. 
um, but there's, I would say, more moments in which this is not fully recognized. Yeah. There's, that's called forgetfulness. Forgetting yeah. who you are and then believing that, again, you are the one who's thinking, the voice in the head, the ideas, the beliefs, and then then perceiving that the world is actually real and exactly there's something to gain there exactly and that's you know where, where this thought was i you know i i see fractionally who i am you know according to your definition but there must be i don't see everything of it because there are still because you know otherwise i wouldn't take this for reality all this mind and so on you know so my question is how what are some pointers that may help me to to really fully understand it? If I fully understand it, you know, I would see who I am, not just, you know, every once in a while, but uh, more permanent, more permanent. It's by fixing the attention on it, on it that enables you to really experience who you are and be who you are. And then when you put the attention on the thoughts or the mind, then this gives en you give energy to that. And um, I do not know that one can combine both together. So all what they can do is at least at work, start to treat every thought as an illusion as a dream so they take less uh, they give less meaning to it and they don't react to it as much and then at a certain point then when that's not important any anymore then you can fix the attention on who you truly are and it has to be constant I can point some things that um, quotes from Anamalai Swami just so the mind can comprehend let me pull it out first of all is pointing when the rejection of mental activities becomes continuous and automatic you will begin to have the experience of the self means let's take an example I need to accomplish this when you see this is just an idea it's not real then you start to reject it except that I do not know how to combine it in the business world because the business world is all driven in, into the future it's all what we got to do, how we're going to become better, how we're going to present it be better, how we're going to market these images, product, whatever it is. And if you would reject it, what action would you take? I mean, if I reject the, if I reject the thought... I mean, if I, if I say that this thought is an illusion, I'd say, you know, we need to perform better in the, in the brand. And I, if I see this as an illusion, then, then there may not be an action at all. Then I do not suggest for people to quit their job. Mm -hmm. What I suggest is to increase your attention and time and effort on discriminating your thoughts and beliefs and fixing the attention on who you truly are when it reveals it's not something the mind can do therefore let's say you are in performing the job catch every time you are reacting you're emotional that would be an alarm for you to say hey I am identifying with a particular belief so you just see it, it's a thought, an idea, nothing more. And as you stop reacting, you just take action. So the more you are t 
taking action and less reactive, then the mind is more in harmony with what is. So at least when you're engaged in activities in life, you're less reactive and you're more in harmony with what is happening. That means less desiring things to be different than what they are. It doesn't make you passive. Is and it? when you mean, sorry, when you mean action, like, you know, like seeing it as an illusion, as just a thought, but then acting, just acting, meaning, because, you know, when I do the job, I'm analyzing data or, you know, I'm, I'm I don't know, putting some PowerPoint slides together, thinking strategically, you know, that's sort of the action in a way, but at the same time, those are thoughts as well. You can see that all of it you just imagine into the future that doesn't exist really. Right? We just imagine the future based on, on the memory of the past. So the future is just the past. So you take strategic from the past. You project them into the future. You realize you're dreaming all of it. And that's it. So you don't give it too much significance. Then the second thing is when you are dealing with management with people and they, they don't do something. And if you approach them and you're upset, that means you have a belief that they should have performed differently when in reality they didn't. So if you react to them, you actually um, seeing their default, what's wrong. If you see that, yeah, the idea is that they were supposed to perform better, yet in reality they performed the way, the way they did, and now, how can I say, good, you've done a good job, let's improve in this. And then you come from a place of non-reaction instead of a place of reactivity. This is more powerful when you work in a company and managing people, is to strengthen the good things that they've done instead of, you haven't done it good enough. You haven't done this. And that's why you're, you can do it when you're not reactive to your ideas about what they should have done and they didn't. That helps with managing people and being in harmony with what is. Yeah. That enables you to have less reactive mind. When the mind is less reactive, then there is more equanimity, more balance, clarity, and then the self can start to shine through. you more centered, more grounded, less affected. That's, that's a good opportunity to put into use while you work. While you are off work, then do your best to maybe be still and even for moments to recognize what is absolutely still. Like if you don't move right now, you might recognize that there is a silent place within you that is just aware. And even if thoughts appear, fix the attention on that aware. Be more, be more interested in the aware than the thoughts themselves. So what happens in the beginning, the mind escaped that aware, which is changeless and ever free. It's getting the mind to start to fix the attention back to it. There's a recognition and then the mind moves. Open that gap from few seconds to a longer period, to a longer period. And then the habit of the mind to catch the attention appears. And then you just recognize it and you shift the attention back to aware. So it's not something you have to sit for, for one hour for meditation. 
which can support anyhow except it's to find these glimpses when you have a lunch break commit yourself to put the attention on that aware that eternal peace and when the mind wants to move from it stretch it don't move fix the attention back to this eternal peace a little bit longer so you open the gap of this the gap between the, the thoughts to rest in awareness right yeah that, that's uh, that's great um, one other question I have you know when I'm in the job itself uh, during the day um, and I feel like you know because sometimes I feel like actually like even you know when you want when you want to perform well on the job even the silence helps you know sometimes to be creative or to do, to do the job better so sometimes I feel like that the more sort of I'm relaxed or chilled you know I just I think there's a a little fear that if I just sort of be myself completely and sit in meetings you know completely quiet you know in a way I mean I'm just exaggerating but um, sometimes I feel like that there is no sort of reactions um, or let's say actions wanted from people around me you know to show confidence and you know to be present something confidently and so on um, and you know if I I don't know I guess there is a thought in this mind right now sort of saying you know if I keep doing this more people around me may think that um, I'm not doing my job at all, like, you know, what, is ha what happened with this guy, you know, he's become, I don't know, more quiet or crazy. Um, at the same time, I know that, you know, if I am in this sort of phase, I just came back from vacation, you know, and, and I'm much more quiet because, you know, I was much more sort of in this quietness, um, and I come back and I can see things much clearer at the job as well, you know, so I have sort of this, yeah, this... Uh, tension there, you know. I sort of I know when I let go, there's a, it's anyway better even for this body mind. But then um, at the same time, there's this fear of oh, you know, I may not fit into this company anymore. If you don't fit first of all into the company anymore, you're it's over, it's finished. Yeah, this is how life happens. The right. second is that. When you're by yourself in the, in the job, find times that you sit quietly and stop everything and just fix the attention within. Whether you experience silence or even observing the breath or just being aware of sensation or watching the thoughts. Yes? And then when you're in meetings, just learn to go in be aware and come out and notice how much the habit of the façon or the, the that you built around yourself how you are perceived by others challenge it a little bit without anybody know that only internally inside you like okay I tend to speak and comment on different things and just step back watch and maybe later comment or don't do it automatically or you have something to say and you have you tend to cut and and interfere just be quiet let them finish and then say what you have to say make a note of it and then say it so it doesn't um, you don't lose the idea these things will enable you to be more clear. It comes back to non-reaction. And non-reaction would be physically, verbally and mentally. You work with that or non-reaction means it's not that you're not going to see the reaction happens. Is that reactivity would come first and then you're aware of it. And then when you stop reacting, then when you are aware of it, you would just watch it. And if you don't cooperate with it, it gets weaker. I'll give you an example. 
if you tend to listen and you behave a certain way let's say you move your head and then now you listen you don't move your head you'll see what thoughts you have or if you listen and you tend to speak afterwards if you listen and you're not gonna speak verbally you would see the thoughts about it so now you would see there may be the subtle reactivity versus the gross reactivity which would be physical this will enable you more clarity that's all you explore and watch closely at the habits of the mind and instead of cooperating with all of them especially the ones that are not useful watch them and don't act upon the, them especially the ones that don't serve negativity judging reacting and eh, arguing with what is happening and yeah it's basically judging reacting and um, conflict with what is these are the three you would see the judgment internally you would see the reactive internally and you would see the conflict with what is happening i want it to be different it should have been different why did it happen all these thoughts are conflict driven you watch them and as much as you can you stop feeding the energy into them that's very very important rather than going and even having a lot of time by yourself because that will um, if you're earnest about it that will a uh, rapid the cleansing process internally in the midst of life in the job in where there is pressure because if you're already there that's exactly what you need when you don't need it anymore it won't serve you something else happens this is how everything happens like that sentence that you said at the beginning uh, of your answer which is you know I think that was one of the points if I because I think there's sort of this I don't know this thought that if I change my habits or if I change whatever is going on in the body and mind I may not fit into that anymore but I think that's exactly it right so I'm putting maybe right now more importance to where I am in this company versus actually who I am and I think as you said it's at the end it's all that matters is who I really am versus you know what's happening outside in this in this world of time and space and body and mind and I think uh, that makes a lot of sense um, really like you know as you said not to just quit and then go on but to see to be really fully what I am um, who I am and then uh, and then whatever happens outside happens um, that's so. that's karma basically so whatever if you're supposed to work in a particular job that will be that's what's gonna happen if you're not supposed to work in that particular job it's gonna happen therefore don't be concerned about that it's be more aware of what's happening internally and then it doesn't depend on what happens externally and make sure that you stick with non-reaction means that you observe the reactivity and you don't keep feeding it it doesn't mean reactivity is not going to come into the surface this is a very common mistake that the mind misunderstand it, it hears Hmm, non-reaction so I'm not supposed to react so if I would adopt that idea I'm not supposed to react every time reactivity will come I would react to it judging it resisting it not wanting it yet non-reaction means the reactivity appears and I watch it and it subsides Exactly. This, this.
this uh, attention to all those subtle thoughts and reactions, I think exactly putting a lot of attention attention on that. Exactly, and as you said, there's some maybe, or maybe also I have, you know, usually said, okay, sort of ignoring it versus actually observing it but not reacting to that. Also, you can you can check, and you can ask a different question instead of who am I. Let's say you notice the mind is reactive, and now you you ask, without this thought, who am I? Or who would I be without this thought? How would I respond without this thought? Or is this thought real? Especially when there's reactivity due to another idea that something was supposed to be different. Because if you would watch closely, many times the mind argues, fights with what is. Because anytime I'm attached to a desire, I'm in conflict with what is. When I'm just present without a desire, there is harmony. So I think to answer the question from the beginning, is to set a goal within you is to be in harmony. So anything which is thoughts that cause you disharmony, this is the point you have to ask yourself, choose. Am I going to feed this disharmony or I'm going to choose harmony? And then at a certain point, the more you experience this eternal peace, Thoughts that put uh, pulls the attention from this eternal peace, you would ask, is this what I'm interested in or I'm interested in eternal peace? And you'll shift the, shift the attention to eternal peace. So it's like two layers. Harmony with what is and then eternal peace. And that's basically the ability to discern between harmony and disharmony and between changeless peace and tension, stress, fear, etc. So if thoughts appear and they cause you stress, right away examine them. Are, are these thoughts real? Is this really what I want? I want to be stressful? And if you choose peace, then you say, okay, I'll just watch. I maybe change the way I perceive it and I'll be more at peace with it or I won't take action based on this thought that caused me stress and you would notice that anytime you experience tension is because the mind is attached to future outcome wanting to gain something in the future forgetting life is only now no future I just imagine it that's another way to discern and discriminate. That, uh, yeah, that's, that's just sparked a big thought, actually, another big question that I had, but I didn't actually raise, but, you know, I've, I've been reading a lot of, I don't know, whatever you call it, non-duality books, and, you know, for many years, and, but you actually brought it exactly to the point because I've, you know, sort of always sort of said, okay, yeah, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind. You know, I have this sort of intellectual understanding of all, you know, all this non-duality and this teaching. But as you said, you know, this sort of still from the point of view of the mind wanting, have, desiring something that it is not, so in the future or from the past, coming from the past. But I think the only way is actually to be right now what's happening right now and to be fully attentive to that and to really see all the subtle little reactions and judgments and everything that's going on so that actually answers some question that I didn't even raise but yeah <laughs> when when the mind says I'm not the body 
you validate there is a body. It's saying there, the world is not real. Basically, you say there is a world. And that remains only mental. When you start to see that your world is whatever thoughts you have in the mind in that moment, then you have to examine very closely what thoughts in that world appearing. And when there is no thought, you experience who you are. And when you don't experience who you are, then you experience the world. Make sure that in the world, you approach every thought with clarity and harmony. Because when you approach the mind with clarity, then the mind is clear. When you approach the reactivity with clarity, then you're clear about the reactivity. When you approach the confusion with clarity, then you experience clarity. And the work is to undo the confusion of the mind, to undo the reactivity by not feeding it more energy. It has already energy from within. We cannot stop that energy. If, if a car is, is already driving, you cannot just, boom, stop it in, in a, off its track. It has to slow down. All the habits, the vasanas, what they call, they call it hidden latencies. Hidden habits in the subconscious, or they call it in the storage, is there that we don't see. When you are fully present and have enough intensity and presence, all these habits come into the surface to be seen and be released. If you react to them, not wanting them, resisting it, you're feeding that energy. You keep the car moving. If you just observe it and not cooperate with it, it loses, you don't, you don't give it energy. So it would be like a plant. If you keep watering the plant, it would keep living. If you stop watering the plant, it would decay and die. The same with the habits, with the reactivity. And basically all the false identification is habits, reactivity. The whole personality is made from reaction, nothing more. So you want to observe the reaction and do your best not to act upon it, not react to it. Question it, watch it, don't take physical action or verbal action and it pass away. I'll give you another example just to, to emphasize. Let's say somebody tells you something and he's totally wrong now you walk away and your mind starts how does he say this is not true and i'm gonna tell him i'm gonna i'm gonna now you're reacting the mind is reacting if you go out and tell him you feed the energy go if you keep quiet and you observe it and it's finished and then you see that all it's just a story imagining all and you're defending a particular idea that is not real and next time you meet him you're not even charged about it that's it you see this being for the first time with no story this is how you implement it and put it into use People imagine that if they quit the job and go to the cave, they will go be able to be in, is, um, have a serene mind. The serenity of mind is in the midst of life, where you are. Because if you were not supposed to be where you are, you wouldn't be there in that moment. Life makes no mistake about anything. Therefore, we get exactly what we need. And in that, what we need is the playground to see, can we recognize that that's what we need? Can we recognize the habits that come into the surface? Am I attached to them and get follow them? Or can I just observe them and let them pass through? 
and not feed the energy? Can I shift the attention and rest in the silence? Am I still emotional? So I believe particular thoughts that are appearing to be real? And if I do, this is a gift for me to examine it. Because <clears throat> I can just share with you that I was looking for many different places around the world, moving around, finding the ideal place to go deeper and deeper. And I never found a place like that, because there isn't. It's only inside you. So I might be in the most amazing places by myself, yet my mind was so reactive, I couldn't stay there. It moved the body to a different place. And on and on and on like that. Therefore, it's where you are, this is where you have to do the work and examine your belief system and the ideas and watch it and gradually it loses the power it loses the power less and less reactivity less and less identification more and more silence and then gradually and organically you can fix the attention on the silence you cannot force it there's nothing people can really force or the mind can force it's an illusion they try, the whole force is going out. When you go in, you can't force it. Because then the mind reacts and it reacts so violently that there is more reactivity to it. Then feeding the energy, it's resistance, yeah? Creates friction. If I put one hand and then somebody else puts one hand and as long as they resist, it gets stuck. If one rela relax, the energy can move and flow. Internally is no different. Be the garbage warrior. Don't be afraid to work with the garbage inside. It's the reactivity, the habits, the emotions. All of it, when they arise, go into it. Examine it. Look at it. Don't question it to get out of it. Let be able to go through it. It just dissolves, dissipates. And then the space is cleared and you are already that anyhow. So you cannot gain the self. You are already the self. So you just have to remove the obs what obstructs it. And then grace happens. When it is obstructed and when we are, the mind the least expects it, it reveals itself in, in its full glory. Changeless. Aware. anymore. I feel like any any word would not add anything. Very good. I wish you all the very best. If any doubts you can contact us anytime and we can discuss again so you can continue removing the false identification and letting the mind rest gradually in its own course 
into who you truly are. Thank you for for connecting and all the best to you as well. Thank you. Thank you.